In this video I'm going to be introducing the secant method which is a open root finding method and in the last video I talked about the newton raps method which uh, I described this algorithm for finding roots and in that discussion we talked about its uh, strengths and weaknesses and uh, one of the weaknesses we identified was that you have to know f prime or the derivative of the function that you're looking uh, that you're searching for its roots for and uh, that was a weakness uh, because um, you know sometimes when we're finding when we want to find the roots uh, of some function we don't want to have to know the derivative of the function maybe we can't even evaluate the derivative uh, maybe we c don't even know the equation for the function f of x, but we can evaluate it by doing some experiment. Um, so, and uh, if we if we can't evaluate f prime of x, the function that we're uh, that has roots that we're looking for. Um, what we can do is we can we can use a modified version of the newton raphson method called the secant method and so the secant method is what we're going to be talking about so the secant method uh, modifies the newton raphson method by uh, approximating f prime so it, it approximates f prime using a backward finite difference approximation. So, uh, so we are going to replace uh, the derivative with a first backward finite difference approximation. <clears throat> and uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I talk about finite difference approximations for derivatives, and um, you can go back and look at those, but the backward finite difference for some function f prime at xi, so if we want to know the derivative at this point xi, this is approximately equal to our function at xi minus our function at some previous value xi minus 1, that's why it's called backward, all over xi minus xi minus 1. So um, if we substitute this into the newton raphson method right here, we're going to take this approximation right here and we're going to substitute it in for f prime right here. If we do that and we modify the newton raphson method that way, the algorithm that we come up for finding the root is our next guess for the root xi plus 1 uh, is going to equal our current guess xi minus function evaluated at xi times quantity xi minus xi minus 1 all over function at xi minus f at xi minus 1. So this is the secant method algorithm, root finding algorithm, right here. This is the secant method.
So, uh, uh, for example, why don't I just try and implement this method for a simple function? Uh, I think in the last video for the Newton Raphson method, we did this function. We did f of x equals x minus 3 times x minus 6, right? And that this function is actually x squared uh, minus 9x. Uh, plus 18 and then the derivative uh, we don't need to know the derivative of the function this time so uh, but the caveat here is we need when we start out we need to have two initial guesses xi and xi minus 1 so um, the Quadrant, the, the difference from the newton raphson method is is uh, secant method requires two initial guesses for the root So, and you'll see why here. So, we could call these xi and xi minus 1. Those are the two guesses that we need. So, let's do an example here and it'll be more clear. So, before, uh, when we did an example using the Newton Raphson method, we said let's come up with a guess of uh, 1 for the root. So, we'll let x1 equal 1 but we need to know okay, let's if we let this be uh, let's let this be xi and so that means we also need an x0 guess I'm just gonna let this one be 0 okay so those are our two initial guesses so now if I want to use the secant method to get uh, um, my a, a next best guess x3 that's going to be equal to x oh well not x3 hold on here x2 I'm getting ahead of myself x2 right I've got guesses 0 and 1 now I need guess 2 so guess 2 is going to be equal to x1 minus um, f f at x1 all times x1 minus x0 all over f at x1 minus f at x0 well we can calculate this out we've got f of x up here right so uh, f, we can just write this down, f at x1 is going to be equal to 1 squared minus 9x, nine, 9 times 1, so 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus 18, which this is just equal to 10. And then f at x0 that's the other thing we need to know is at 0 that's just going to be equal to 18 right because we plug in 0 and 0 so 0 here and 0 here and 18 is the only thing that's left alright so now we can plug those numbers in here so we're going to get uh, x1 the value of x1 is 1 minus f at x1 which is 10 so 10 times x1, which is 1, minus 0, all over f at x1, which is 10, minus f at x0, which is 18. We can simplify this further. So we get uh, 1 minus 10 divided by minus 8, right? Which that turns out to be 
um, uh, let's see, 18 tenths, which is also equal to 1.8. So now we've got a value for x2 using our secant method. This is x2, right? So now we can take that x2 value and the x1 value and we can get an x3 value. So x3 is going to be equal to uh, x2 minus f at x2 times x2 minus x1 now all divided by f at x2 minus f at x1 and we know all these numbers here we can well we need to calculate uh, f at x2 right f at x2 which is equal to f at 1.8 that's the only new number we have to calculate right here for the next iteration because we know what f of x1 was uh, from our previous calculation up here f of x1 was equal to 10 right so we know f of x1 was equal to 10 so now we've got f of 1.8 I'm not going to calculate f of 1.8 but we can plug in all the values for all of these things right here and get a value for x3 and then once we have a value for x3 we can calculate a value for x4 using the formula so x3 minus f at x3 times x3 minus x2 all over f at x3 minus f at x2, right? And so on and so on until we get close, until our uh, approximation for the root is good enough. And so I have just a little... Uh, uh, little animation here in PowerPoint that shows the secant method at work. So I've got two initial guesses to start out with. This is x0 and this is some other guess. We draw the secant line through and we find out where that secant line crosses the x-axis and that becomes our guess for the root, our next guess, which is x1. Then we draw a secant line between uh, the point x0 and x1 and find out where that crosses the x-axis to get our next guess. And then we draw the secant line between these two points and find out where it crosses the x-axis to get our value for x3 and so on. So that is the secant method. And the nice thing about the secant method is uh, a couple things. Let's just kind of write down the advantages uh, of the secant method. So, um, secant method, secant method summary. Okay, so it doesn't need, doesn't require knowledge of f prime. It also uh, it converges typically a, just a tiny bit slower. Sometimes just one, most of the time, just one iteration slower than Newton Raphson. So it's a little bit uh, slower, but not much slower, barely than Newton Raphson. Um, but uh, I, I need to preface this with the fact that Newton Raphson requires two iteration, two function evaluations per iteration. You have to evaluate uh, um, Newton Raphson, you have to evaluate f prime of x and f 
and f of x each iteration. Whereas in the secant method, you actually, uh, to start out, so starting out, uh, you need two guesses. You need two initial guesses. Uh, but uh, only one function evaluation per iteration. So the secant method is uh, Secant method is more computationally efficient. Computationally efficient. Uh, in comparison to the Newton Raphson method. So it's actually pretty much like the go-to method um, uh, in open uh, numerical root finding methods. Secant is like, it's just a really good method that, uh, that converges quickly and doesn't require you to know a whole lot of information about the function like its derivatives. Um, it's just an all-around good method. I think it's one of my favorite uh, numerical methods. Anyways, um, uh, that I think is going to be it for the this video where I'm introducing the secant method, um, and we'll see you in the next video.